Okay, so in today's episode, we're going to react to just pearly things. That's the trend right now. I thought it was, <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> there was some, uh, what do I do best? Gatekeep. So we're just going to go over a couple different concepts about attractiveness, what's going on in the dating market, a little bit of black pill on that little bit of MGTOW, the differences. Yeah, we're just going to go right into it. What up, guys? Welcome to the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel. Today... I'm having classes for my friend Jess. Yes. She, would you say you're like half red pill? I say I'm half red pill. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm giving her some lessons just in life. Make sure you pay attention, class. And my producer, blessing, he's camera shy, but he's been telling me, right? He said he's the man of his house now. Oh, <laughs> so <is> today's <laughs> lesson is why dating is ruined in 2022. Do you think it ever could come back? The marriage rates have plummeted. Oh, Lord. Plummeted. They're Jesus. lower than ever in human history. Human history. She's not entirely wrong. They have plummeted. Well, that's a bold statement. Maybe in the past, like, 10 500 years. years. <laughs> <laughs> the data set that I have dates back all the way to the 1800s up until 2015. Obviously, there's been like seven years from then. I do have a smaller linear graph that shows the 2018 stats. They're going down. Oh, I mean, I'd imagine like in the Stone Age, it was probably lower. I don't know. <laughs> but look, okay, okay. Look, that, that's not the point. So this all started <clears throat> in the 1950s. With she birth. is correct. Started in 1950s, at least the creation of the yeah. pill. Oh, birth. it was the 50s, bitch. <clears throat> now, what happened with the development of birth control? This led to, okay. So, birth control was developed in the 40s and then introduced in the 50s. I've done an entire video on the history of the birth control pill. It's not a good one. Don't recommend. I'm gonna be honest with you. It was first developed and it was the first human experiment yeah in puerto rico i believe at the time they were sterilizing women and so then there was like uproar about it or i could have this wrong or it was like going to be introduced like they were going to start sterilizing and so when they developed the birth control pill they would go door to door like our good old witnesses and just like hi here's a pill you don't have to sterilize yourself and pretty much they were able to get like thousands of people on this trial without them knowing it was a trial they thought it was like what we would consider fda approved but it wasn't so that was back during poodle skirts okay let's keep going 60s and 1960s i can understand why a lot of like when in doubt in the red pill like 1960s but hose <laughs> <laughs> before the 1960s 50s roughly i don't i don't this is just a rough it, women couldn't really be hoes at the same rate like Pearl. because if you slept with dude he might get you pregnant Right, yeah. so back then, you know, the pullout method has been around since like the 1700s, Pearl, <laughs> and condoms. But I understand what she's saying. I wouldn't necessarily say it created hoes based on the number of partners reported, which can be faulty. I think the baby boomers were the only ones that had like significantly different ones. Anyways, the birth control pill didn't create hoes. And it didn't create women that could just sleep around. Like, that wasn't the thing yet. That came later. <laughs> Definitely created hoes. It always ties back to a woman's existential fear. It's not like, oh, we can sleep around. Like, people were shamed back then, for sure. Like, I think this is really common. A lot of people see the birth control pill, and then they, they associate it with women hoeing out. <laughs> like, just hoeing out. And we forget that there's a lot of... There's a lot of other things that go into play, societal pressures. Look at the economics if you want to. But it was certainly an introduction into like the feminine imperative in the gynocentric social order. We'll get more into it. So I'm just trying to pause. You had to prioritize a man that was a provider. Oh, that's what I forgot. So we also forget, and this is something that I will make sure that everybody knows on my channel forever. 
the birth control pill, if you guys want to follow the stats that I'm talking about, I put them in the description. It's the study where they had computer generated faces that they made of men. They would ask women what they found more attractive and it would change depending on where they were in their periods. And it was like women's sexual mating preference changed on the pill. When we talk about this whole women went for a provider, this is like a black pill talking point. And you'll understand what I mean. Because before women were not on the pill, their ability to sniff out a masculine partner would have been accurate. Now, some people will say that like the birth control pill doesn't entirely stunt it. I think it does. But anyway, so the faces, obviously, if a woman is releasing the egg, the period, (laughs) that's going to be the ovulatory phase, which women typically are looking for somebody who arouses them. But on the pill, it tricks you into thinking you're pregnant. So you're looking for a beta provider. So this is one of those things that I seem to always draw this conclusion when I hear like men ask women, what do you look for in a guy? And the reason that there's so much dichotomy is not just like, oh, they're solipsistic, oh, they have hubris. It's not just that stuff. That certainly plays a role. But the amount of times that a woman has said, I prefer feminine guys. I prefer guys that are more like this. It's not uncommon. So to throw that whole thing away, just, oh, they just don't know. It's like, well, let's dig a little deeper, shall we? You have to know how long she was on birth control. I say this because it's like, you could be on birth control for six months. Black pillars will be like, oh, they've been the the hundreds of partners, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about like the extremists, y'all. Okay. And then, but actually... Six months isn't really going to change if you're like your average woman. It's not going to really change who you look for long term, right? I'm going for your basic bitch. Y'all be like, they're all hoes. I don't think so. And so when they're on birth control for, let's say, a year, okay, they could probably cycle one partner, two if she's one of those. And if it's like multiple than that, I don't even think her preference matters at that point. Low self-esteem. I, it's whoever's available my opinion. But so when you have this pill that's making you choose the opposite of what you normally would, that's when you see the decline. That's when you see divorces, obviously with the introduction of feminism, just like storming through. But like that, I think is, I think the hormonal aspect is one that often gets overlooked and shouldn't be. I think that's one of the main reasons, because when you look at certain stats, hopefully I have this, Oh, yeah, I did. Didn't it pop up before? When you look at certain stats, a woman's willingness to get remarried after she's been divorced once, she doesn't want to. Now, I'm not talking, can she find somebody? I'm not talking about that. I'm like, self-reported. Do you want to get married again? Women don't. Now, we say women benefit from divorce. Statistics will say that women end up in poverty. Like, it's mixed. (laughs) If you're taking half the shit, something tells me you just don't know how to handle the money. That's a personal belief. I'm not going to discredit the other shit, though. But when you look at the fact that women are... Is this the right one? No. Where's my other one that I had? Is it on four? Hold on. So when you look at the birth control pill, divorce, you see if women want to get remarried again. Do I have that? It's in the link. It's in the third link, I believe. They don't want to, but men always do. And it makes you question why that is. I'm not drawing a conclusion, but I won't even say but. I'm not going to draw a conclusion from that, but there's other questions to be answered. If you want to be scientific, you look for new information. And if women don't want to get remarried again, it's a very big claim to make that women benefit more from divorce. Now, I know what men are thinking. Okay, men are more focused on things like money. So men are like, she's taking half my shit. I get that part. I get it. I'm just saying, if women don't want to remarry, it's not that they can't, they don't want to, but men do. What does that tap into? Think. Starts with an I. I don't know if you guys hear when my phone goes off. Here we go. Loyal. All around just the good guys, the nice guys, okay? That was what you had to prioritize. Because if you didn't, you would be, 
because no nice guy. What's wrong with the logic here? She's not totally wrong, but the, there's something, if you think back to history, the men that were considered one percenters, whatever, your high value dude, what's the difference? Social media, global sexual marketplace. And no, the word was idealism because men will, to beta men, will always cling to their beta beliefs, their idealism. Like, that's why I think they get remarried, personal opinion. Um, okay, we'll keep going. Equals baby mama. Okay. So back Where are we then, going? baby mama was actually, you should be ashamed if you're a baby mama. How far are we going back? <laughs> Farrell. That was like the worst thing you could do. If you slept with more than like two people, you a hoe. Slut. Oh, uh, blessing. <laughs> <laughs> How, how does a girl sound with a two as a body count nowadays? Blessing. <laughs> blessing, I think he said. <laughs> Unheard of. Men pray for two. I really want Jess's shirt. What? It's the global sexual marketplace. That's what's really changed. Because all it's done is exacerbate a woman's hypergamous filter.